All right, so I want to give a, an update on the UFO alien, uh, a.k.a. Fallen Angels. And uh, just in case you're not aware, I'm going to tell you, there are no UFO aliens. There are no Fallen Angels. There is no angel sex. And... You don't have to worry at night when you're sleeping about a UFO alien or a fallen angel coming down and having sex with you and your wife. All right, that's not never going to happen. It's never happened. Angels are spirits, and the reference in the Book of Revelation about the third part of the angels are. In reference to the spirits associated with the devil that's and the word angel is only a spirit it's only it's only reference is spirits and spirits don't have sex so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff I just want to clarify that and then and then show you here the nonsense of this idea that there are uh, you know whether you want to call them UFO aliens or if you want to call them demons or what whatever you want to call them they're non-existent they do not exist um, the the devils are spirits and they're they're not floating up in the air all right and uh, so let's get into this um, let's look at the first one here I don't think we need any sound for these. So you see here, um, like you know, the idea being presented here is that this is this is uh, you know an alien aircraft from the planet Mars. Uh, Fema Mino, Astrono Filmato no. Chu da China. I have no. I, I, I'm assuming that's uh, Spanish. Um, Femamino is. I mean, I think that means freaky, strange film in a part of China. I think. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Who cares? This is not from the planet Mars. All right. And then let's go to another one. That's cartoon stuff. Let's. Here we go. UFO caught on film. Here it is. Here's our evidence of your fallen angel, which doesn't exist. Here we go. Hold on to your seat. There it is. The thing is from the planet Mars, and it's coming down and having sex with people's wives. I mean, honestly, is that what you believe? If that's what was happening in the days of Noah, well, then it must be happening now. Should we look at this one here? Might as well. I'll make this the last one. And now, seriously, this is what people are teaching. These things, they're teaching that these things are real. And that inside there are creatures. Some say they're from other planets. And since that doesn't fit, since that's, not, you know, so ridiculous that uh, people say, oh, well, they're not from other planets. They're... They're demons. All right. So either way, what they're teaching is that these there are creatures inside of that vehicle there, and they're coming down and having sex with women. Just ask them. That's what they're teaching. Just be. If that's what you're teaching, just be honest. Just be honest about what you believe. You believe this is real? Look, it goes behind that building. It must be real. Well, look. You're, it's very obvious to me, you're wanting to believe something that's not true. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is all nonsense. This is all sci-fi stuff. It's not reality. All right. It's not supported by the Bible anywhere. There's nothing in the Bible that says 
UFO aliens are coming down and having sex with your wife or your daughter or even you, whatever. It's not there. That's what people are teaching, though. All right, and uh, I am here. Yeah, I'm not going to stop beating this drum. It, this is only for those who care about the truth, and I just want to show you how ridiculous this nonsense is. All right, so let's move on to another ridiculous thing that's being talked, but it's not being talked about as much. Uh, and it should be talked about more, in my opinion, because uh, they sold us this idea of a manned maneuvering unit. That these guys were up in outer space and they were fought flying independent of any vehicle. They themselves were the vehicle. They had jetpacks and thrusters. They just hit their little thruster and they would fly around in space. Now, think about this, man. <laughs> if that were possible, a millionaires would pay big bucks to be able to take a free ride in outer space. You're talking about a small unit that it's a jet pack. I mean, don't I have video on that? Okay, I do. Here, let's see if there we go. That, I mean, this is a small, this is not a great big giant aircraft that has to, you know, lift up into outer space. They already got that, right? So you could put a, you know, you could put 20 people in these things, you know, on one of your rides up into outer space, up into heaven, where God is. I mean, that's, that's what NASA claims, that they've conquered heaven, and that they essentially are God. They're above us all. And you could put up, you know, these rich people in these manned maneuvering units, and, you know, they could, hell, they'd pay a million dollars a piece. You get 20 of them, you get 20 million dollars right there every time you go up into heaven. And let's face it, let's, you know, let's not confuse words. The word outer space is just another word for heaven. All right, and people say, well, outer space isn't in the Bible. Well, you're right, it's not. It's called heaven, right? And this is unbelievable. Um, it, maybe it's not argued as much as it used to be, but I would have numerous conversations with a variety of folks who would try to make the case that outer space is not in the Bible. And that this idea, all this space travel, it, it's not in the Bible because the Bible didn't know. Well, God, you telling me God didn't know any of this stuff? Um, uh, just strange. I've had some very strange conversations. I, you know, who knows? I've been on the wrong side of them, too, I'm sure. But um, the fact of the matter is these things stopped being implemented in 1984. They, they canceled it. It's hard to fake something for uh, too long without getting busted. So they put an end to it, and then, of course, their excuse is there's just no benefit to doing them. So we're going to stop doing it. It's just like, you know, the, there's just nothing to see on the moon, so we just don't go there anymore. And we've done it all, conquered it. We own it, conquered it, and, uh, you know, women don't need to be up there. Just stay in the kitchen, you know. Black people... Just stay in the cotton fields. You don't need to go up there. Um, but we had 12 white guys. We all figured it out, conquered it. So you just mind your own business, right? I mean, seriously. We, we live, supposedly live in an age of equality and justice. Where's the equality? And <laughs> where's the justice? Okay, well, it's coming. I guarantee it. All right, so I just want to show you a clip. Okay. that permits the astronaut to, to go where he wants to go in space without uh, reference to any other object, without holding on to anything, without pulling on anything. And this is uh, extremely important when, one, uh, when we want the astronauts to go out and gather film from, uh, say, the back of a future capsule or over to another, op 
to another uh, spacecraft to maneuver uh, with a with a thruster uh, with a with a thruster. Now I'm looking at a photograph, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> in the beginning of the book. I mean, this starts right off the bat. It's a photograph of the astronauts practicing in the zero G airplane. This picture, which covered two pages in the book Carrying the Fire, a book written by Apollo astronaut Michael Collins, was snapped by a professional NASA photographer as the plane flew an outside loop to temporarily eliminate or cause the illusion of the elimination of gravity. The cabin is padded to protect the occupants from the inevitable fall that the instant uh, the loop is terminated. Now, what I'm looking at here is Collins as he practices spacewalking. He's holding the propulsion rod in his right hand to maneuver uh, with a with a thruster. And uh, on the facing page, ladies and gentlemen, is the Gemini 10 spacewalk. This picture was extracted from the center section of the same book and was allegedly taken during a spacewalk on the Gemini 10 mission exactly three years before his Apollo 11 mission to the moon. Now, NASA claims to have landed the first man on the moon during this mission. He is shown holding a jet reaction propulsion rod with his left hand. But ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> They faked it. You got doggone right. They faked it. Alright. Just sit up my voice on the phone. Underneath the envy round my bones. I'd do anything to get you alone. Just for a while. So I like that song right there. So let's take one look here at uh, what it looks like and see if we can sort of draw a comparison here. Let's find, really that's, uh, let me go right there, why not? Well, no, that's good enough. Look, check that out. That's supposed to be real. All right. There we go. He's just, looks like he's sitting in a recliner, floating through space. All right, now consider this, all right? I just showed you this. This is sci-fi stuff, man. Sci-fi stuff. Now what is this? This is sci-fi stuff. They're selling us science fiction. They're not selling us the truth of Jesus Christ. That doesn't anger you?